So the reason we're making this video is because of one tweet that I saw pop up on my Reddit feed. I was on the Calgary Flames subreddit, and don't ask me why I was on there, I was just on there, and I saw this tweet posted onto the sub yesterday. Now, okay, no, today. It was like five minutes ago. But it's yesterday for you because this video will be uploaded in about 24 hours from now. This is what Pat Steinberg said back on May 28th, 2022. I found the original tweet and I wanted to go over this as well as some of the replies and some of the quote tweets as well because the contrast of where things were, what was that, like two months ago compared to now? Kind of crazy, isn't it? Here's a tweet from Steinberg highlighting a quote made by Matthew Kachuk when he was asked about signing a long-term deal with Calgary. Absolutely. I'd love to. I love it here. I love the people here. I would be very open to signing a long-term deal with Calgary. I'm just gonna let that sink in for a little bit. We're not gonna take this graphic off the screen until a little bit later, but like... I want you to let that sink in. I love it here. I'd love to sign a long-term deal here. I would be very open to signing a long-term deal here with the Calgary Flames. And some of the replies, I mean, you got people saying, oh, his qualifying offer is $9 million. Oh, this is a great move. Look at that. Matthew Kachuk is showing dedication, and now he's going to stick around. That is amazing. And... People are saying in the replies, okay, well, we're not too sure whether or not Johnny Gaudreau is going to stick around, but at least we have Kachuk and his guarantee, his word that he's going to stick around here long term. That's amazing. I'm so happy to see it. And even the quote tweets, you go over to the tweets from before, not the ones that are from like yesterday. Oh yeah, great move, great quote, etc, etc. But then the tweets from like yesterday are like, oh, it's the Tyler, the creator, so that was an effing lie. You have, oh, I don't give Kachuk, Paul, beauty out there, going out there saying, hey, what's changed? It's been two months, come on, man. Like, I wanted to go over what exactly optics are. I wanted to talk about smoke and mirrors. I wanted to talk about media and just how players usually go about things. So... This is always one of the big things that I feel like we need to establish every time we talk about quotes, especially from general managers, is that whatever it is the case may actually be behind the scenes, us as fans and media people as media people do not necessarily get that 100% of the time at face value. Because there are optics that go into things like this. When Mark Bergevin says we are not trading P.K. Subban, what he's doing is he's making sure that P.K. Subban's value does not go down when they inevitably trade the guy. Sure, maybe in his heart of hearts he believed at the time of saying that quote, yeah, we're not going to trade Subban, what the hell? But then after an extensive eight-hour conversation with the rest of the Canadians' management, they're like, okay, we kind of have to trade him. Let's get him out of here. When NHL GMs say one thing or when NHL players say another thing, they're usually saying what needs to be said. Because if Matthew Kachuk back in May, let's go back to May 28th. What the heck was going on in May 28th in the NHL? May 28th NHL. Were there any games at that point? Yeah, okay. So it was round two, game six between the Hurricanes and the Rangers. Okay, so it was two days after the Flames got eliminated by the Oilers in overtime, Connor McDavid doing the Connor McDavid and the Oilers winning 4-1 to one in the Battle of Alberta, which we're only gonna get for one season, man. My gosh. But in this time frame, if Matthew Kachuk says before the entire RFA negotiation process goes along, yeah, I kind of don't want to sign here. Obviously, that's gonna make things a lot worse. And I think there is a part of me that believes that there is a reason Matthew Kachuk even said it like that. We know Kachuk and Brady, you know, they're honest dudes most of the time. They're very outspoken, and when you see media interviews with these players, they're usually really talkative, and they get some good thoughts out there. I do like the way that the Kachuks go out there and speak. And so for Matthew to say something like this, I definitely think that in the moment he believed it. It's just, as time goes on and as the team loses out on more pieces, it becomes a lot more difficult to say, okay, yeah, I'm still on board. I still want to be here. Yeah, Johnny Gaudreau just left, and now Erica Branson left too. This team, we already lost 4-1 against Edmonton, and now we're getting even worse. I still want to be here. 
I feel like there's a big part of this that has to do with Johnny Gaudreau leaving, and I don't really think that's too difficult of a conclusion to have. I know as fans, we're able to see everything that goes on at face value and make our own assessments, but if media people go out there and invalidate those ideas, hey no, Kachuk's not going to leave. He said here in this quote that he wants to stay. Some fans, most fans even, are going to take that at face value and say, okay, great, he said he wants to stick around, that's good. Some other fans are a little bit more pessimistic and saying, okay, well, let's just wait till the contract gets signed and then we can actually talk about him sticking around here because a lot can change in two months. You know, everybody talks about Pierre-Luc Dubois wanting to go to free agency. A lot can change in two years. Heck, a lot can change in two months. This team got significantly worse over the offseason and Matthew Kachuk was just in the background looking at it happen in front of his eyes and now he's like, okay, well, I don't want to re-sign here anymore. Sorry. Who knows if it's Calgary as a city or as an environment or whatever? Who knows if it's the team and the direction that they've gone down? We saw that Johnny Gaudreau could have gotten a better contract with a better team here in Calgary, but he decided to go to Columbus instead. So maybe for some of these American players, it's a little bit different. Or maybe, as we said in the previous video, Johnny Gaudreau just happens to be weird. There are many circumstances that can go out there and fulfill the reasonings as to why some players would or would not go through a decision-making process like this, but... At the end of the day, it is kind of stinging, I guess. That's the best way to describe it. It stings. Seeing a quote like this from Matthew Kachuk two months ago, where he's like, yeah, I want to stick around here. I'd love to play in Calgary long term. And now he doesn't. So, that sucks. To end off this video, I want to go over to the subreddit. This is the thread that I actually found the tweet from. A lot changes in two months, apparently, from hold the phone. And here are some of the things that Flames fans had to say about this quote two months down the line. Yikes. Yeah, MTB writer, I agree with you right there. Yikes. Chemical Signal says, I honestly think losing a draw probably shifted Kachuk from signing at the right price to not wanting to be here. Again, the forehead goes out there and replies, I don't think he was ever going to commit to a multiple-year deal. His camp set his career up exactly with the intention of becoming a UFA at 25. If an alternate universe where the Flames had kept Gaudreau, they would probably still sign the qualifying offer for Kachuk and assume they could work on a long term throughout the year because it worked for Johnny. But since it didn't work for Johnny, the Flames aren't going down that road again, hence the trade incoming. Now, his qualifying offer was $9 million, which is a steep amount of money, but for a guy putting up 100 points in a year, I mean, okay, give me $9 million, whatever, he scored 100 points. Even if it is only for a one-year deal, that's an extraordinarily valuable player, but at the same time, this is kind of why a lot of fans are not fans of that bridge deal when you're talking about RFAs who are 20, 21 years old coming out of their entry-level contracts that make the league right away. You have the option for players to go down this route, where they don't resign, where they change their emotions, where they stop feeling the way they feel about your team, and everything goes down the drain. It helps you on the cap hit in terms of saving money in the short term, but long term, it really changes the dynamic as to how you view your players and how your players view the team too. So, talk to the comments on your thoughts about Matthew Kachuk and his comments from two months ago after the Flames got eliminated by the Oilers, saying that he would love to stick around here in Calgary. Was Johnny Gaudreau the main factor that unravels a different sentiment? Is it purely just, hey, Johnny's not here, or is it Eric Branson who also left here too? Now I don't want to be here as well. Talk to the comments on your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. And, bye.